With the Officia DFM100, you can monitor ECG, pulse oximetry, non-invasive blood pressure, or NBP, and N-tidal carbon dioxide. When monitoring ECG, you can use the multifunction defib electrode pads or monitoring electrodes attached to a 3 or 5 lead set. You can even use external paddles to do a quick assessment only. The ECG cable is color-coded and keyed to fit the white ECG port. For proper lead placement in 3 and 5 lead sets, consult the instructions for use. The monitoring leads available depend on what type of ECG cable is connected to the DFM100. When you turn on the DFM100 in monitor, manual defibrillation, synchronized cardioversion mode, or switch into one of these modes from another mode, the default lead is displayed in Wave Sector 1. If that lead is not available or has poor ECG quality, the device automatically searches for the ECG lead with the best quality and displays that new lead in Wave Sector 1. You can also change the waveform for each sector during a patient event. How to change a waveform differs depending if you are in AED mode or not. In non-AED mode, the ECG wave for Wave Sector 1 is selected through the Lead Select button or through the Displayed Waves menu. To change the waveform displayed in Wave Sector 2 or 3, press the Smart Select knob. Navigate to Displayed Waves and press the Smart Select knob. Select the desired wave sector and press the Smart Select knob. And select the new wave type and press the Smart Select knob. If needed, select the appropriate ECG wave size and press the Smart Select knob. In AED mode, the pad's ECG wave is automatically populated in Wave Sector 1. To assign a wave to Wave Sector 2, press the Smart Select knob. Highlight Wave 2 and press the Smart Select knob. Select the wave you want placed in Wave Sector 2 and press the Smart Select knob. When the pause period ends or the Resume Analyze button is pressed, the newly assigned wave appears in place of the pause progress bar. The DFM100 uses the STAR Arrhythmia algorithm for monitoring arrhythmia. Arrhythmia analysis provides information on your patient's condition, including heart rate and arrhythmia alarms. It uses the ECG lead appearing in Wave Sector 1 for single lead arrhythmia analysis. If the device is not identifying the patient's rhythm correctly, you need to initiate relearning. To do this, press the Smart Select knob. Navigate to Measurements Alarms and press the Smart Select knob. Select HR Arrhythmia and select Relearn Rhythm and press the Smart Select knob. The DFM100 will then display a message confirming that manual relearning has begun. Now let's set up for SpO2 monitoring, which is also available in AED mode, if configured. Insert the blue connector into this port located on the side of the DFM100. When choosing a location for the SpO2 sensor, be sure the site has good perfusion. Apply a sensor appropriate to the patient's weight. A pleth wave displays while the oxygen saturation is measured and the value is calculated. Within seconds, an oxygen saturation reading and patient pulse rate appear. As the patient's oxygen saturation changes, the SpO2 value is updated continuously. The DFM100 can also monitor non-invasive blood pressure. The measurement can be done automatically or manually. The first step is to select the appropriate sized cuff for the patient. The cuff width should be either 40% of the limb circumference or two-thirds of the upper arm length and the inflatable part of the cuff should be long enough to encircle 50 to 80% of the limb. Attach the cuff to the NBP tubing and the tubing to the NBP port on the side of the DFM100. To perform an NBP measurement, 
press the Start NBP Soft key. The cuff inflates and then slowly deflates. If you need to stop the NBP reading, press the Stop NBP Soft key. The NBP measurement appears on the screen as systolic followed by diastolic with a mean arterial pressure in parentheses. To schedule automatic NBP readings at regular intervals, press the Smart Select knob. Navigate to Measurements Alarms, NBP, NBP Frequency, and press the Smart Select knob. Select the desired interval and press the Smart Select knob again. Automatic measurements begin based on the interval set. The automatic time interval appears here on the screen. The Officia DFM100 can also monitor N-tidal carbon dioxide, or ETCO2. There are two sensors used by the DFM100, mainstream and sidestream. There are some factors to consider when selecting accessories for your particular sensor. Patient type, adult or pediatric. Patient airway status, ventilated or not ventilated. And if ventilated, humidified or non-humidified. To measure N-tidal CO2, connect the sensor cable to the CO2 port on the Officia DFM100 and the sampling line to the sensor. Attach the sampling line to the patient according to instructions for that sampling line type. Confirm that the patient category is appropriate for this patient. When a sensor is connected to the CO2 port, the measurement is automatically turned on. To avoid inaccurate readings, sidestream and mainstream sensors need to be reset and require a valid zero be performed when a new sample line is attached, there has been significant change in environmental conditions, when accuracy of the reading is questionable, or when prompted by the Officia DFM100. Zeroing the sensor can be done by using the Zero CO2 soft key or accessing the Zero function using the Smart Select knob. In this case, we'll demonstrate the procedure using the soft key. Confirm the Officia DFM100 is in a clinical mode. Then, simply press the Zero CO2 soft key and the CO2 Zero in Progress message appears on the display. The message disappears when zeroing is finished. There are two measurement values associated with ETCO2 monitoring. The first is ETCO2, or end tidal carbon dioxide, the peak CO2 value measured during expiration. The second is AWRR, airway respiration rate, or the number of breaths per minute. In addition to the values, the monitor displays the CO2 waveform or capnogram in the configured wave sector, if available. This is the shape of a normal capnogram. The Officia DFM100 has two alarm categories, one indicating changes in patient condition, physiological alarms, and the other, device cable issues, technical alarms, that may require attention. There are three alarm types, high priority, medium priority, and low priority. A high priority alarm warns of a life threatening condition, such as a systole or ventricular fibrillation, and requires an immediate response. The alarm message displays with a red background and sounds like this or this. A medium priority indicates a non life threatening condition such as when the heart rate measurement violates the high or low limits and requires a prompt response. The alarm message displays with a yellow background and sounds like this, or this. Low priority alarms indicate a device problem or non-life-threatening condition, such as this SPO2 non-pulsatile message and they appear in this cyan background and sounds like this or this. Alarms are also categorized as latching or non-latching. 
With a latching alarm, visual and audible indicators remain present regardless of whether the alarm condition still exists and it is not removed until it is silenced and acknowledged or a higher priority alarm condition occurs. With a non-latching alarm, visual and audible indicators disappear when the condition no longer exists. To respond to an active alarm, press the Smart Select knob once to acknowledge the alarm and press it again to pause the alarm for the configured pause period while you attend to the patient. Setting high and low alarm limits and turning alarms on or off is the same for all measurements. So let's look at how to do these tasks using NBP and SPO2 as examples. To set the high and low limits, press the Smart Select knob. Use the Smart Select knob to highlight and select measurements, alarms, NBP, NBP limits, systolic, the high limit appears in this window. Use the Smart Select knob to increase or decrease the high limit. Press the Smart Select knob to set the new high limit. Now the low limit appears. Use the Smart Select knob again to adjust the low limit and press the Smart Select knob to set the new low limit. The current high and low limits for each measurement appear next to its measurement numeric. If you need to turn off an alarm, start by pressing the Smart Select knob. Navigate to Measurements Alarms, SPO2, and Alarms Off. The menu closes and this icon appears next to the SPO2 measurement indicating that the SPO2 alarm is off. The Officia DFM100 can store up to 8 hours of vital signs trending data for review and printing. To view the stored trending data, the Officia DFM100 must be in monitor mode. Press the Smart Select knob. Navigate to Trends and press the Smart Select knob. The trending report displays here. Most recent data is to the right and older data to the left. As new data is acquired, it displays on the screen. The trending report only displays measured parameters. This symbol indicates invalid data, while the same symbol before a numeric indicates questionable data. A blank space indicates data that is unavailable. You can adjust the display's time interval for the current patient. With vital signs trending active on the display, press the Smart Select knob. Navigate to Trend Interval and press the knob. Use the Smart Select knob to select the trend interval you want and press the knob. Use these soft keys to scroll backward and forward in the Vital Signs Trending Report. When there is no more data in a particular direction, the soft key becomes inactive. To exit the Trending Report, press the Close Trends soft key. With monitoring setup complete, we can now turn our attention to the therapeutic use of the device. The Officia DFM100 provides therapy options including semi-automatic external and manual defibrillation, synchronized cardioversion, and pacing.